Hello and welcome to this presentation, an introduction to AppV5. My name is Rory Monahan. In these videos, I plan to introduce you to AppV5 by explaining what it is, how it works, and also show you some demos of how to set up the AppV5 full infrastructure for streaming, how to sequence an application, and also how to test a streamed virtual application. To begin with, so what exactly is AppV? Microsoft AppV is Microsoft's application virtualization solution. Microsoft purchased a product called SoftGrid from a company called Softricity in 2006. Since then, they released new versions with some improvements and new features, but they did not change th things too drastically. That is until now. AppV5 was released just before uh, this new year, with version SP1 being released a few months later. AppV and application virtualiza virtualization in general works on the premise of isolation. A virtual application is isolated from locally installed applications as well as other virtual applications by default. Due to this, there's no longer any threat of application conflicts or the old problem of DLL hell. AppV also offers the ability to stream applications. This removes the requirement to install your applications. Instead, they now stream from a central server which can be centrally managed. The beauty of this is that there is no more downtime due to application installs and install related reboots. This will be illustrated uh, going forward. The packaging effort for creating a virtual application or sequencing as it's called is actually quicker and more simple than traditional MSI packaging and scripting. Deployments can require less overhead and planning, as there's no installation-related downtime. So here you can see a rough diagram of the AppV infrastructure. It illustrates some of the supported configurations for AppV5. Um, as you can see on the top left of the screen, you can see a Windows application being sequenced. The output is a virtual application. From there, you can see that it goes into the AppV management server. From the server, you can see the end user devices. These systems have the AppV client software on them. This client enables the AppV applications to work on them and also enables the machines to receive and stream the applications from the server. The client will check back to the server to see if any new applications have been provided for the user machine. If so, it will make the apps available uh, if the app or apps have been removed, it will remove them. If we look back behind the AppV management server, we see the components required for the AppV management server. For version 5, applications can be assigned via Active Directory using groups, which depending on your configuration during the setup, can use user objects in the groups or computer objects. Uh, we also see web services. AppV5 has three web services. These can be hosted on one server or could be installed on separate servers. We can also see two, two databases. One of these databases is for the management server database, which contains the metadata related to your AppV applications. And the other is the reporting database, which contains more dynamic uh, data for reporting application usage. We can also see the AppV management console, which is a website in version, version 5. Uh, this is used for managing the applications, for adding applications to be streamed, assigning them certain AD groups, etc., etc. Now, over to the right, we can see a branch office scenario, which actually requires 4.6 SP2 to be viable. It will not work with AppV5 anymore, but AppV4.6 SP2 can work in coexistence with AppV5 in your environment. In this scenario, you do not require all of the backend infrastructure like the databases. You could just stream from a server. Personally, I find this to be overkill and not worth the end result. It's best just to move past 4.6 SP2 and remove it from your environment and move on to AppV5. But the option is there if you do have a requirement for a branch office scenario without the costly backend infrastructure. Here we can see the typical application behavior with AppV5 streaming. Your shortcut appears just as it would using a conventional locally installed application. When the user clicks on the shortcut, 
In the background, the application will begin to download or cache onto the user's machine. The streaming can use either server message blocks, HTTP or HTTPS protocols, uh, which you choose when deploying your applications. The end result is the application launching. As stated, this is a background process that is initiated from launching. So really, the user will see the shortcut, they'll click on the shortcut, unbeknownst to them, it's going to load in the background, and it's going to launch the application. So they see the shortcut, they click it, they see the application launch, just like a regular application, only it's being delivered through a different method. A few points of interest. With that V5, you can optimize your application launches during the sequencing phase, which means during the sequencing, there's a prompt to launch your shortcuts, and you can carry out some minor testing steps. This then gets captured into the package. So when the application is launched for the first time and begins to download or cache onto the client machines from the server, it will launch quickly while still downloading the remaining blocks in the background. Another interesting note for AppV5 is that it allows you to select if an application automatically should begin to cache onto the user's, user's end device when it's delivered from the server. So in that scenario, it doesn't require the user to click on the shortcut for it to begin to download. It will be downloaded and ready for the app for the user when they launch it. This may be desi desirable for mobile users who could go offline with their systems or just for particularly large applications to speed up that initial first launch for your users. Why should you use AppV? Simple. It reduces management overhead for application packaging and deployments as there's no reboots related with installations anymore, no erroneous insula installations which may not have rolled back gracefully and possibly corrupted something on a machine, or just removing the general issues related with failed installations. There will be no more application conflicts as all applications are isolated from one another. It eliminates the need to rigorously test applications to ensure they do not break other applications or possibly uninstall files related to other applications or the system. AppV5 is mostly PowerShell driven, which means for much more flexibility and capability for automation. AppV5 is a very straightforward sequencing wizard, which, as just stated, can be relatively easily automated, even those which do still require manual sequencing should be quick to perform the sequencing steps on. Sequencing is much quicker generally than MSI packaging or scripting. Application upgrades when using streaming can be very straightforward. As you make the change to your existing package, make it available to the end user, and the next time they launch the application, they get the changes you applied. This is by using what's called the Active Upgrade Procedure. AppV is part of MDOP. MDOP is the Microsoft De Desktop Optimization Pack, which is available to software assurance customers and is typically downloaded from the Volume Licensing Center website. You should note that there is a server client available which is separate from the MDOP pack and can be downloaded separately from the same site. As I illustrated earlier, if you used previous versions of AppV, you should have noticed that the infrastructure requirements have drastically changed. SMB and HTTP or HTTPS can be used as the streaming protocols now. RTSP and RTSPS and file are no longer uh, there as an option, which is pretty good as this helps reduce the input required during the sequencing and setup. With the previous versions, HTTP actually did seem to be the quickest form for streaming, though server message blocks is now a very attractive option due to the way it uses network resources. I had mentioned earlier there is PowerShell integration, which gives you room to automate. Connection groups carries on where dynamic suiting left off. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept of dynamic suiting, as I have already uh, discussed, app fee and application virtualization gives you the benefit of isolation. So all your applications cannot see one another and the, your system cannot see the applications. 
and this is good but what happens when you have an application that requires to see another application to, for some functionality well then you can actually allow those applications and those applications only to see one another so you break down that layer of isolation just between those applications um, uh, <clears throat> connection groups carries on where that left off in previous versions personally so far I much prefer it to dynamic suiting it seems much more straightforward and I would think people who are new to AppV could grasp this much quicker you also no longer edit the OSD files to set this up and it can be done during the deployment phase via the management console website the shared content store is a great addition for those look, looking towards a VDI environment so basically shared content your applications don't cache don't have to cache to an actual uh, physical hard disk they can be cached to a central central uh, file share central server and be accessed by multiple users the shared content store does seem better defined and thought out than the previous shared read-only cache which was available in AppV 4.6 which really did seem like an afterthought and uh, wasn't planned for when the initial build of 4.6 was delivered uh, with the addition of this shared content store and with SMB being used for uh, a smart means of streaming and the automatic downloading feature available during the sequencing of your applications all of these together can get you closer to that goal of a non-persistent desktop as your applications can stream on demand and not require to cache to a designated user's virtual disk there's now also less limitations there's no 4 gig size limit anymore uh, there doesn't actually seem to be a size limit at all from what I've seen and from what I've read com and name and objects can be allowed to run locally certain file protocols such as mail2 now work also features for some applications such as drag and drop may work this one is a little sketchy right now as from my experience I've had mixed success but it's a promising uh, it's promising to me that these features are being addressed other limitations still remain such as drivers com plus and decom as stated before sequencing is now much more streamlined with less inputs required the console and the client have a neat looking silverlight interface there no there's no longer a requirement for a virtual drive the virtual file system is now mounted to the hidden directory of C program data you can also now target computer objects in active directory and not just user objects as I had previously stated so with all of these changes in and advances in AppV there's never actually been a better time to start and to move to it and for anybody that's planning a Windows 7 migration or a Windows 8 migration right now this is the perfect time to introduce application virtualization into your environment not only will your packaging or repackaging efforts be quicker in most cases but you're also helping to future proof yourself and just making for a much more dynamic application packaging and deployment procedure and also in the long run a lot more cost effective and if you're going to VDI then really it is a no-brainer and to me I think app v5 is by far the best application virtualization technology out there for a VDI environment so how can you set up all of this well in my next few videos I'm going to demo the setup for the AppV management server the AppV sequencer and the AppV client for version 5 I'm also going to cover how to sequence an application and also how to test an application streamed from the server again for these videos uh, just please watch the next series of videos I think they will
be a really good uh, representation and demonstration of AppV. For more information on AppV, you can go to my website, RoryMon.com. I don't just cover AppV. I do a lot of stuff around Windows 7, Windows 8, and a lot of other technologies that you may be interested in. So again, if you have any interest, please visit my website, RoryMon.com. Thank you.